In 1994, Nelson Mandela became the first democratically elected leader of South Africa. It was the culmination of decades of struggle against the racist apartheid state and its supporters. As the world mourns the loss of the father of the Rainbow Nation, we take a look at his life and legacy. The Union of South Africa was declared in 1910. It was founded by a coalition of British colonists in South Africa and the Afrikaans-speaking Boer settlers of Dutch extraction. From the beginning, South Africa was built on racial segregation. The Land Act prevented black South Africans, who made up over 70% of the population, from owning land outside of the reserves, except in the Cape Province. The pass laws meant that every black person had to carry a passbook, showing that they had the right to be in a white area. There were white-only beaches. Only white South Africans were allowed to vote. And legislation, introduced in 1950, classified South Africans into separate racial groups. Apartheid uh, was a very horrible system against humankind. Uh, it's a system that we do not wish for any parts of people of the world. Uh, it deprived um, the black majority uh, basic necessities um, from education to health to housing. And we think that um, it was a system that was designed to oppress and just make sure that uh, black people are only slaves uh, for the masters. And we think uh, uh, that is not desirable for a world we are seeking to create. The key thing about uh, life for black people under, under apartheid is that they weren't citizens in their own country because what the regime was doing was it was creating a kind of white controlled area which was where most of the wealth was and most of the workplaces were and separate black homelands or Bantustans, which were effectively labour corrals, they weren't sort of economically viable. So the black people living there had to go to work in the so-called white areas, and that's why you had the pass laws to control their movement. And what that was about, really, was making it much easier to exploit black labour, who became migrants, foreigners, as it were, in their own country. That was the single most important thing, and it meant then that wages were very low, it went, meant that unemployment Employment was very, very high, but that wasn't that unemployment wasn't a burden to the white state because it was locked up in these impoverished Bantustans. Nelson Mandela was born in 1918 in Mbezo in the Eastern Cape. From an early age, he dreamt of being a part of the struggle for freedom for his people. He soon became politically active and was expelled from university for attending a student protest. In 1944, Mandela joined the African National Congress and quickly rose through its ranks. He led a national defiance campaign, inciting mass civil disobedience against a number of unjust laws. In 1958, Mandela married Winnie Madikizela. Later, during her husband's imprisonment, Winnie would emerge as one of the leading figures in the anti-apartheid struggle. Winnie Mandela was a huge inspiration to women across the world and particularly in South Africa. But for those of us that experience multiple discrimination, experience double discrimination because of our race and gender, seeing a strong, powerful black woman in the face of apartheid, standing up, campaigning, supporting her husband, was a, a massive inspiration and gave us strength and gave us hope. In the spring of 1960, in the Sharpeville Township, police opened fire on an anti-pass law demonstration. 69 unarmed protesters were killed and over 180 others were injured. South Africa was plunged into a state of emergency. The ANC was banned and Nelson Mandela, along with others, was forced underground to continue the resistance struggle. 
The ANC and Mandela continue to argue for mass strikes, protests, boycotts and pickets. But as the South African state escalated its brutalization of the black population, the leadership took a tactical decision to militarize sections of the struggle. Partway through the, um, the struggle against apartheid, Mandela formed, well, he helped found and lead Spear of the Nation, the armed wing of the ANC. And at the time, the organization was prescribed um, by the South African state and its allies as a terrorist group. Um, how significant was the militarization of the struggle? It was a departure from a traditional uh, method of struggle, uh, which was used by the elders of the ANC at the time. You'll remember that um, that period came through what was called a program of action, which changed the, 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 the method of struggle. Um, Umkondo Wesizo was formed. Uh, there was lots of mass defiance campaign in the country. Uh, people had gone to exile. There was lots of underground work that was happening. And the ANC was also mobilizing international communities through, for instance, uh, such as uh, anti-apartheid movements to try and ensure that uh, a South African apartheid government was experiencing um, uh, sanctions. Well, I think it was an absolute disgrace that Mandela was uh, described as a, a terrorist. Clearly, he wasn't a terrorist. He's somebody that stands up for peace, for equality, for rights and for justice. But it isn't of any surprise that the British government at the time described him in that way because they didn't want to support the boycott campaign. They didn't want to stand up against apartheid. They were quite happy for apartheid to exist and just look at it from an economic perspective that benefited them. I think there's a real shift in the ANC as a result of the Sharpeville massacre in 1960 because there's a big build-up of black protest in the 1950s. It's confronted with extreme state violence and the young radicals in the ANC, like Mandela, draw the conclusion that this is a violent state that's going to have to be overthrown violently, so they turn to the gun. And I think that radicalisation, that sense that this is an all-out revolutionary struggle, is a positive development. The problem with it, of course, was that the guerrillas were a kind of small, elite uh, underground massively outgunned by the South African state and largely cut off, necessarily so, because that's the nature of that kind of struggle, from the mass of black people. That was a disadvantage. It also meant that it was easy for the South African state and its supporters abroad to label the ANC as a terrorist organisation. Now, that of course was an outrageous thing to say about Mandela and his comrades. They were responding to the violence of the South African state and they were representing the cause of the great mass of the black population. In 1962, Mandela was arrested and imprisoned. The following year, he was tried for sabotage. During the trial, he gave his famous speech from the dock. I have fought against white domination. And I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and sent to Robin Island. The conditions in the, on Robben Island were appallingly bad. Mandela was subjected to um, hard labour. Uh, there was permanent damage to um, his eyesight. Um, rations were very, very poor. It was an absolutely brutal uh, regime. And 
One of the things about him um, that makes him such an iconic figure today is his extraordinary resilience right the way through that period of torment and his refusal to compromise. Uh, and towards the end, when they were trying to open negotiations as the regime began basically to face up to the fact that white supremacy was, was becoming unsustainable, Mandela even then wouldn't flinch on the fundamental principle which, which was that there had to be black majority rule.